Jones. Daniel Jones looked pretty good, my friends. My New York football giant friends. We might actually have a season worth looking forward to. I'm ecstatic, so happy, and I'm so happy to be here with you. It's Man vs. Madden 2019. It is week four. The standings are still tight. I'll get into that in just a moment. But first, the week that was week three, we had backup quarterbacks. Kyle Allen looked nice. Gardner Minshew looked good. And of course, your boy, Daniel Jones, giving the New York football giants their first win of the season. Never thought it'd come, but it did. Daniel Jones era is here. It is here to stay. How that affects my predictions going forward, we'll see. How it affects your predictions going forward, we will see. I don't know yet, but I'm very excited to watch the rest of the season. Teams that aren't looking good, Pennsylvania, what's going on? The Eagles, the Steelers, not looking good at all. The, the, these guys, I predicted them to go to the Super Bowl. Me, as a Giants fan, predicted them to go to the Super Bowl. I know they have a lot of their weapons hurt, but they're not looking good. They got a tough matchup this week. The Steelers lost Ben Roethlisberger. I know that's a reason for panic in Pittsburgh. Mason Rudolph looked okay, I guess, in San Francisco last week, but did not get the W. And then business as usual for teams like the Patriots and Chiefs. The Patriots, I don't even think, had a real game yet. I think they've been scrimmaging this whole time. I think Brady's been chilling. They really haven't been tested at all, which has been annoying to see as someone who dislikes the Patriots as much as I do. But enough talking. Let's get into week four. Let's look at the standings and see where everybody lies. And so far, after three weeks, you and I are still tied. We both went 10 and six last week, bringing us up to 31 and 17 on the year. Madden, rough week last week. We knew it was gonna happen. We all knew something was wrong with Madden. We didn't know what it was smoking. Apparently it wasn't the good stuff. It went eight and eight. They are 29 and 19. So you and me, two games above Madden, which we can celebrate on, right? We can at least come together for that. We can still compete against each other, but let's celebrate the fact that we are better than Madden right now. And also, let's take a look at our CBS pool. Our week three winners were Adam Kaufman and Andrew Ambrose. Congratulations to you. Not sure if that wins you anything, but it does give you a boost in the standing so you can catch up to Brennan Elwood, who has 37 points. Brennan, congratulations. You are our leader after three weeks, but you know what? The season's not even a quarter of the way done. So don't get ahead of yourself. Of course, we are competing for $750 worth of gift cards. So that's something you can look forward to. Again, the link is in the description below. You can click on it. And if you're already in it, I'm just reminding you to make your picks because you don't want to miss out on $750 worth of gift cards. Enough talking. Let's get in to week four and to predictions of myself and of Madden. Thursday night football matchup, that's right, it's the Philadelphia Eagles traveling to Green Bay to take on the Packers. This is a big time matchup, so big time that I'm deciding that right away it's a key matchup for week four. This is a huge game for Philly, a gigantic game. Listen, the Packers are 3-0, they've looked really good on defense, they haven't looked that great on offense just yet. I do expect their offense to get going though because Aaron Rodgers is the quarterback for crying out loud. I know Matt LaFleur is new. It's a new system they have to work in place, but Aaron Rodgers is your quarterback. And I, I know the whole thing is not about the quarterback. Your line plays a role and receivers and everybody plays a role, but Aaron Rodgers is your quarterback. And I expect the Eagles to struggle a little bit because they don't have everybody. That line's not playing well. Their secondary is very weak at the moment and Wentz doesn't really has weapons. And for that reason, I think the Eagles fall to one and three after this week. I'm taking the Packers. Let's see who Madden has. All right, we fast forward into the action. Ooh, 31-31, tight game, 127 left to go in the game. Eagles at the what? Is this the two? I guess so. Handoff to the right side. It's a touchdown. The Eagles take a touchdown lead on the road in Green Bay. Let's see how Aaron Rodgers and Green Bay responds. So here we go, first play from scrimmage in this drive. Aaron Rodgers drops back, he's looking. He finds his tight end across, that's not Jimmy Graham, and that's a fumble. Oh my goodness, not good right away. First play off the drive, and it's a fumble. 
Aaron Rodgers not even given a chance to do his thing. So it looks like the Eagles are going to ice it here with a field goal unless something crazy happens, which I don't think it will. And it didn't. 41-31, Philadelphia Eagles beating the Green Bay Packers on Thursday Night Football. So right away, again, Madden and I disagreeing. I haven't been doing too well on the Thursday Night Football games. Hopefully, it changes this week. Let's move to the Sunday slate of games starting 1 o'clock in the afternoon. MetLife Stadium, home debut. Daniel Jones making his first start as the quarterback for the New York Giants taking on the Washington Redskins. And I don't know, maybe I'm drinking the Kool-Aid. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm a Giants fan. I don't know, I'm taking the Giants. The Redskins are bad. They're really bad. Case Keenum is bad. He's really bad. And I know the Giants defense isn't that great. Um, I know Case Keenum actually might have a decent day considering how bad that defense is, but I think Danny Dimes is going to put up enough points where the Giants can pull off the victory at home, taking themselves to 2-2. Two and two. Let's see what Madden has to say. Oh, and look at that. Madden disagrees with me. Of course they do. 16-6 Washington Redskins. I guess about to end it here. No, let's throw the football. Let's do that when we need to run it. And of course, being that it's a Giants secondary, it's a first down for Washington, practically sealing the game. 16-6 Washington Redskins over. The New York Giants, according to Madden. We now travel to Detroit, Michigan, where the Lions, the Lions, I guess a bit of a surprise right now. Uh, they take on the Kansas City Chiefs after defeating the Philadelphia Eagles in Philadelphia. Matthew Stafford and company, I guess, try to keep the momentum against, in my mind still, I know the Patriots are killing it, but the best team in football, the Kansas City Chiefs. I don't think it's going to happen. I got Pat Mahomes in squad here. I do think it's going to be a pretty close game. Uh, I think Matthew Stafford can keep up with Patrick Mahomes, but Matt Patricia doesn't really like to take shots deep too often. Um, they run a pretty conservative offense. I don't think you can be too conservative against the Chiefs. You can kind of exploit them in the secondary. That's what I would do if I was Matt Patricia, but I'm not an NFL coach. Give me the Chiefs. Let's see what Madden has to say about it. It is 31-17. It looks like the Chiefs are going to win this one easy as Matthew Stafford is sacked. No bueno. This is not looking good for the Lions. Second and 17, Stafford drops back and he stands there like a statue doing absolutely nothing. And that's why he almost gets sacked. Gets out of it, throws it downfield. Oh, it's complete to Danny Amendola. Matthew Stafford might make a game out of this. Not what I expected. Up, oh, turns out I was wrong. Fourth and four, one second left on the clock. Looks like the Chiefs are going to take this one. I guess the question is whether or not they cover the spread with this Hail Mary from Matthew Stafford coming right now. It's up in the air. Everybody in Vegas holding their breath. And it is incomplete. Chiefs win. Chiefs cover. 31-17. No shocker here. We now head to Atlanta for the next game on the slate. It's the Titans versus the Falcons. Two teams who, admittedly, I haven't had a good read on for the whole season. I don't think I've gotten any of their games correct now that I'm thinking about it. I might have. I'm not sure. So you're asking me to pick between two teams that I, I've been wrong on all season. So I've repeated this before, but I think the Falcons and Matt Ryan are completely different at home. Their defense is back and healthier this year. Marcus Mariota can't really seem to read a football field despite the fact that he's the NFL MVP, according to Madden. I don't know how they're going to move the football enough to defeat Matt Ryan and the Falcons. I know the Tennessee defense is pretty decent. They didn't do that well against Gardner Minshew last week, but we'll give them a pass. Still like the Falcons in this one. I think Matt Ryan and that offense is too much. All right, we kick things off 27-20. Atlanta, fourth and 14. Matt Bryant looking to extend this to a two possession lead, which would ice it. Kick is up. It is good, making it 30 to 20. I really can't see Mariota Madden, even though he's the MVP of the league, apparently, coming back and winning this one. All right, let's see what the MVP, <laughs> it's funny to even say that, can do here from midfield. Mariota drops back, stands like a stat. No, he does not. He runs into a sack. Vic Beasley Jr., ladies and gentlemen, apparently he's also Superman with that celebration. Tennessee has to hurry up here in the no huddle, second and 18. Let's see what Mariota does. I'm calling a pick here. Let's see. Oh, down the middle. It is not picked to my surprise. Okay, never mind. My bad. Second and nine. Titans have to hurry up here. They have to score here. You throw it into the end zone. And he throws it to the side where it's Adam Humphreys. Does not get out of bounds. 
call, you can't call timeout, no timeouts, no huddle, do something, stop celebrating, stop celebrating, run, do something. And that's what Madden does. What Madden does is when you need the hurry up offense, it does absolutely nothing. Therefore, the time has run out on the Tennessee Titans and Madden has Atlanta winning this one just like I do. We now head to Baltimore for the second key matchup of the week, and that's the Cleveland Browns taking on the Baltimore Ravens, an AFC North showdown. I don't know if it's a must win for Cleveland, but they need this one bad. Baltimore coming off a loss in Kansas City where they looked, I thought they looked pretty good. They're just not better than Kansas City, so no shame in losing there, especially at Arrowhead. I, I gotta be honest, I don't, I don't like the Browns. I don't like what I'm seeing from the Browns. I don't know how anybody can like what they're seeing from the Browns. Baker Mayfield looks like he's regressing a bit. Odell Beckham hasn't been that big play receiver that they thought they were getting, except for one play at MetLife Stadium against the Jets. I, Freddie Kitchens might be too new to actually have Baker take, take that step forward. So listen, I, I'm not feeling the Browns at all. And when you're going into Baltimore, that's a hard place to play. Lamar Jackson is a hard quarterback to stop on his feet. He's throwing the football better. That Ravens defense is is no joke, is no joke. And I can't see Cleveland going into Baltimore winning this one. Give me the Ravens. Let's see what Madden has to say. All right, here we go. Browns down 12. Baker Mayfield needs to score a touchdown here or at least get a first down because it's fourth and seven. I think he's throwing a pick. I, that's just the way it is. Let's see what he does. He's just standing there doing nothing. And he throws a pick. I promise you. I didn't see that highlight beforehand. I just felt it right here. Knew it was coming. Pick for Baker Mayfield. Looks like Baltimore's gonna win this one. Next on the slate is the Colts versus the Oakland Raiders. The Colts looking good this year. I picked against them last week. Jacoby Brissett looked good. That defense looked good, even though they let up a little bit in the second half. They're at home right now, taking on the Raiders who are just a mess. I, they had that week one victory against the Broncos who are also a mess. So. It's not as impressive as it originally seemed to be. They just screwed in that hole from top down. I'm sorry, Raider fans. I'm a Giants fan and I feel bad for you. Um, it's just not, it's not your year. And it's not gonna be your year next year. And it's not gonna be your year after that. And it's, it's not, it's just never. I don't think it's ever going to be your year, Raider fans. And I think it's kind of obvious I'm taking the Colts. Oh, but it's a tight one here, third and two. The Colts need a first down. Not to ice it, the Raiders do have two timeouts. Let's see what happens here. Marlon Mack, he fights for it, and it looks like he got it. Yep, Madden's giving it to him. They're not even taking out the chains. First down, Colts, looking to put it away. It's another third and two situation. This time, the Raiders don't have any timeouts. Brissett hands it off to Mack. Oh, the offensive line pushing back the defensive line, and it's an easy first down. That seals it. 34-31. Madden thinks it's going to be close, but still has the Colts. So do I. We're getting on the same page here. Let's see what you have. Next, we travel to Buffalo, New York. The best team in New York. Some would say the only team in New York since the Jets and Giants actually play in Jersey. Let's not get into that discussion because it will get heated. Um, key matchup. Bills, Pats, AFC East for first place. Go figure. It's week four. Both teams are undefeated. The Bills surprisingly undefeated. Even though they haven't played that hard of a schedule, you played the Jets, the Giants, and the Bengals. Congratulations on three wins. Um, Tom Brady and the New England Patriots. I, honestly, it just feels like every game they play is a scrimmage. They've been kicking the crap out of everybody. I think this is their first test in Buffalo. I think they pass it. I think they pass it barely, though. It's going to be a close game. It's going to be a very close game. That Bills defense is really, really good, um, but I can't really see Josh Allen going against that, that Pats defense. That defense is one of the best defenses in the league. We're just not talking about it right now. Josh Allen is a nice young quarterback. I don't think that he's gonna be able to score too many points. Give me the Pats. All right, Madden agrees apparently so far. It is a close one, 34-34. Looks like the final drive here for the Patriots. Let's just watch Tom Brady win this damn thing. Over the middle. Oh, there's a flag. Let's see what the flag is. Personal foul. Roughing. Oh, that's a face mask. On the defense. You give Brady another 15 yards. I think we can all guess what's coming here. Pat's basically at midfield at the 48. Brady drops back to the sideline. Oh, it's complete. That's another first down. This is happening. 
we're just witnessing it. That's basically all it is. Brady's gonna score a touchdown here. Let's let's stop kidding ourselves. Ah, looks like I was wrong. Fourth and two. Pat's kicking a field goal with 14 seconds left, 13 seconds, 12 seconds. Kick is up. Goskowski, it is good. Of course it is. Tom Brady leading the Pats downfield for a game-winning drive, we think. All right, here we go. The Bills have the ball on the 28. Five seconds left. This has to be a trick play or a Hail Mary, which in Madden world means it's going to be a halfback draw. Oh, it's not. Okay, I was wrong which in Madden world means it's going to be a slant. Nope, it's not. It actually is a Hail Mary. Let's see what happens here. And it is incomplete. The Pats, 37-34 over the Buffalo Bills in a close game. So Madden and I on the same page with this one. We head to Houston, Texas, where Kyle Allen, Kyle Allen, who threw four touchdown passes last week, that's four more than Cam Newton has thrown all season. Sorry to take a shot at Cam. It's just kind of true. Heads to Houston to play. The Houston Texans, of course, because that's the only team that plays in Houston. Give me the Texans here. I'm not sold on Kyle Allen just yet. It happened against the Arizona Cardinals. So, uh, not sold yet. Just do it against a real defense, which would be Houston. Go up against a real quarterback. No offense, Kyler Murray. You're still young, which would be Deshaun Watson. I think the Texans win easily. I think this is pretty much a blowout. Let's see what Madden has to say. All right, we fast forward, 34-11. Looks like Madden agrees with me. Hopefully Christian McCaffrey gets me some fantasy points here. Nope, no handoff, it's a touchdown. All right, good for Kyle Allen. You know, I guess putting up respectable numbers. Fast forward a bit, it's third and three. They just need a first down to seal it. It's already sealed, let's be honest. Let's see what happens here. Takes a snap, wide receiver screen to Hopkins. It's a first down, that does it. Houston beats Carolina, just like I predicted, according to Madden. We now head to Miami where the Miami Dolphins take on the struggling Los Angeles Chargers. And maybe this is a chance for Miami to get there. It's not a chance. Chargers. Madden, not so sure as I am. 41 seconds left. And you know what? If this field goal is wide, right or left, it looks like the Dolphins are going to win. Let's see what happens here. The kick is up and it is good. Madden scaring me there. I thought they were going to pick the Dolphins this week. That would have been bad. Dolphins starting from their 24. Let's see if Josh Rosen can get the Dolphins into field goal range. Drops back. Ooh, fires a bullet. There's a flag on the play. Let's see what it is. Pass interference on the defense. Looks like the Chargers defense is bailing out the Dolphins right now. Rosen, show me what you got, baby. Dolphins from the 40. Let's see what Rosen can do here. 26 seconds left. He drops back, surveilling the field. It's complete. Oh, and another flag. Another flag, what is this for? Personal foul on the defense. The Chargers giving the Dolphins another 15 yards. Is this really happening right now? Dolphins from the 31 looking to get closer with no timeouts, which scares me because that means, I think we all know what that means right now. Rosen drops back, complete to the side. First down, no timeouts, hurry up, hurry up. Hurry up. Stop. Why are you chatting? Hur Stop talking. Hurry up. Get to the line. It's not going to happen, is it? This is Madden being Madden. This is, this is how the Dolphins are going to lose in Madden. Even the Dolphins find crazy ways to lose in Madden. The Chargers pull off the victory thanks to Madden's... I, that's not even a glitch. I don't know what that is. Chargers win 23-21. Next on the schedule, we have Jameis Winston and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers going to Los Angeles to play the Rams and coming off of a loss against the New York Giants last week. The offense wasn't the problem. The defense was letting Daniel Jones come back from 18 points down, defeating the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Actually, I should really say the special teams was a problem because the field goal kicker had a chip shot and missed it. Bad. Not good. And now they play the Rams in Los Angeles. Rams haven't looked too great on offense, um, but I, I really can't see... Uh, Jameis putting up too many points against Aaron Donald in that front line and to leave in the secondary. I, I think the Rams defense shuts down the Bucks. I think it's going to be an ugly game. I don't think the Rams are going to perform too well, but I got the Rams in this one. Let's see what Madden thinks. Oh, Madden apparently thinks the opposite. 30 inches, you should run the ball here, except they don't have a running back in the backfield and they're throwing for some reason. But it's complete. Madden doing Madden things, and it turns out well for the Buccaneers. Time is going to run out. Looks like the Bucks on the road go to Los Angeles and win by 20. Madden, what are you, what are you on? I don't know. I disagree. What do you think? We now travel to Arizona where the Seattle Seahawks take on division rivals, 
the Arizona Cardinals. Arizona has not got a victory yet. They do have a tie. Kyler Murray has put up some stats. He has looked good. Larry Fitzgerald might be 75 years old, but he's moving like he's 21. I, I still can't see a way they win this game. The Seahawks always play an ugly game. It's just, they're never going to blow anybody out. That's just how I feel about the Seahawks. I do think they're the better team here. Uh, give me the Seahawks on the road in Arizona in a close one. I think it's close, but give me the Seahawks. Well, I think it's close, but Madden apparently thinks it's a blowout. Handoff, is that Carson? Don't fumble. He doesn't fumble. It's a first down. 42-14, an easy victory for the Seahawks in Arizona, according to Madden. Who do you guys have? Next, we have an NFC North showdown. A key matchup, as I would say. The Minnesota Vikings travel to Chicago to take on the Chicago Bears. Two very, very, very good defenses. I expect a low-scoring game. Chicago's defense, you saw on Monday night what they did to Case Keenum. I know it's Case Keenum, but Khalil Mack is an absolute beast. Haha, ha, Clinton Dix is an absolute monster in the secondary. Still, he still has it. The Bears are going to be very hard to score on. Minnesota's defense is not too shabby themselves. I think this is going to be a, a dogfight. I mean, just whichever team could probably put up a touchdown or two is going to win this game. I have more faith in the Vikings to do that, to be honest with you. It has nothing to do with the fact that, like, Kirk Cousins, I think Dalvin Cook running the ball uh, could wear down that defense. Could, not saying would, but could wear down that defense. I like Kirk Cousins' weapons a little better. They're going to have to put the ball in his hands at some point, have him make plays. I'm calling an upset here. I'm going the Vikings. I don't think they're the better team. I'm not saying that, Bears fans, so relax. But uh, I do think they win this one. So give me the Vikings. All right, looks like Madden disagrees. 37-21, Bears kicking a field goal here. Eddie Pinheiro, it is short, giving Kirk Cousins and the Vikings a, a little bit of hope, I guess. You're down 16 with 50 seconds left. Let's see what can happen. All right, 27, 26, 25 seconds left. Kirk Cousins in the shotgun, fakes the handoff, drops back over the middle. It's complete for a first down, but there's 17 seconds left at no timeouts. We all know what's coming. Nothing is coming because that's what Madden does. They're not going to hurry up. They're not going to get to the line. The game is over. 37-21, Chicago Bears over the Minnesota Vikings. We head to Denver where Gardner Minshew. Look, can you just throw a picture up of Gardner Minshew right here? Gardner Minshew is the man. I love this guy. He was awesome last week on Thursday Night Football against the Tennessee Titans. I hope, I, I wish this guy continued success. I think he'd be great for the league. I think it'd be great for Jacksonville. I do think it was a one-week thing, though. I'm calling it right now. I don't think Gardner's the real deal just yet. I'm not saying he won't be, but Denver plays good defense. They haven't won a game yet, but they do play solid defense. They are very tough to beat at home in that altitude. I think Von Miller's gonna cause some problems. I don't really like Jacksonville on offense at all. Leonard Fournette is not running the ball probably because they're stacking the box against him. Uh, I just can't see it. I think the Broncos win this one like 17-13. Madden thinks the opposite. 27-9. Flacco dropping back. Oh, nice hit there. Incomplete pass. Oh, and I think, I think Sutton's dead. I think that's the reason why we showed this highlight because Sutton's dead. That's the only reason why we're showing this highlight. He's dead and no one cares. That's another thing about Madden. They don't care when players die on the field. 27 to nine, Jacksonville over the Denver Broncos. Madden and I starting to disagree again. Who do you guys have? We got a prime time matchup here, a key matchup. Dallas going to New Orleans to take on the Saints. The Saints going into Seattle last week, playing well in all three phases of the game. Basically just demolishing the Seahawks. The Cowboys had looked like one of the best teams in the league, to be honest with you. Their defense is solid. Dak has looked good. Zeke has looked good. Their wide receivers have looked good. Um, and they go to New Orleans to take on the Saints. I think this is going to be a very, very close game. I'm going to roll with the Saints here. I know it's a little bit of an upset. I think Teddy can manage the game. He doesn't really need to do much. Just get the ball into Kamara's hands and every once in a while make a play with Michael Thomas. I think that Saints defense is going to be jacked up to play at home. I don't think it's going to cause Dak and that offense too many, too many problems, but I think it's going to be more of like a 31-28 like a type game in favor of the Saints. Let's see what the Cowboys do here on third and three. Dak takes a snap. It's a wide receiver screen going backwards for a little bit. Fights through a tackle. First down, and that should do it. That's going to do it. The Saints are out of timeouts. They can't call timeout. Dallas is kneeling the rest of the way. The Cowboys, 38-35 
over the Saints. I can see that happening. I think Dallas is the better team. I just got the Saints in this one. Who do you guys have? It's time for the Monday Night Football game. AFC North bottom sellers. I Listen, the Steelers look bad. The Bengals look bad. I don't know who I'm going to pick in this one. Um, I don't know what to expect from Mason Rudolph, really. He was okay last week in San Francisco. I guess James Conner hasn't been running the ball well at all. Um, they did force a lot of turnovers against the Niners last week. The one consistent, I know this sounds crazy to even say out loud, the one consistent in this game to me is Andy Dalton. I know when we get from Andy Dalton. Give me the Bengals. I know I said I wouldn't pick him again for the rest of the year. Give me the Bengals. I don't know. Just a gut feeling. Let's see what Madden has. Looks like Madden agrees with me so far. 31-28. The Bengals looking to extend the lead with a field goal here. The kick is up. It's good. Six-point lead for the Bengals with 51 seconds left. Let's see what Mason can do with 58 seconds left on the clock. All right, here's the kickoff. We're showing it for a reason, folks. Something must have happened here. Here's a run back. Create some lanes. Oh, no, he is. Oh, there's a flag. That's why we're showing it. Now it makes sense. Let's see what happens here. Personal foul. Grabbing the face mask on Cincinnati. Mason Rudolph getting good field position. I guess decent field position to start this drive. Here we go from the 36-yard line. Let's see what happens here. Mason drops back. He scrambles and he stops. He scrambles and he stops. He scrambles and he stops. <laughs> he throws it down the sideline. It's complete. Is that Vance McDonald? Yes, it is. First down. Here we go from the 31-yard line. First and 10. Mason drops back to the flat. It's James Conner. He does not get it. Oh, it's happening again. It's happening. We need to call this something when a team is in the hurry up and they are one score down, and Madden refuses, refuses to go no huddle in a proper way, and they end up losing the game based off of replays and just pure idiocy. Bengals, according to Madden, win this game, agreeing with me. I was trying to be different here, but they're going with the Bengals. I think you guys are gonna disagree with us. All right, and that does it for week four of Men versus Madden. 2019. Thanks for joining me once again. We are in a tight battle here. You guys can call me stupid as much as you want, but you know what? We have the same record, so what does that say about you? Just saying. Just saying. Listen, our CBS pool is down below in the description box. All that good stuff. Make sure you make your picks. You don't want to miss your chance out on $750 in gift certificates. Make sure you vote on the key matchups. Make sure you vote on all the matchups. You know who I am by now. I'm Josh Rodriguez. I will be seeing you next week. Good luck. Let's defeat Madden together. Let's join forces. If not, you know what? We can be enemies. We can do this. I'll do it all day. We'll do it all day, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you next week.